A lot of my story begins in New York, 16, aimless and walking the streets. I wrote a screenplay about identity and I wanted to become a filmmaker. So I sat down and I wrote down all the things that interested me and it became the show. I'm not sure if I met Norman in LA or New York. We both seem to live in both cities at the same time. I've always loved our times together, nowadays even more. My show is like a biography in seven minutes. I ask the questions that connect with my guests on a human level and create their portrait at the same time. I'm Patrick Hollick, and this is an interview with Norman Reedus. So you come here? This is I love this place. I come here for breakfast. What's going on out there? If you had to invite three people to dinner, who would they be? Oh, let's see. Um, Howard Stern, mm. Salvador Dali, and uh, mm, I almost said Cleopatra, but that'd just be weird. Um, <laughs> what about you? What three people would you invite to dinner besides myself? When I was a kid, I was always obsessed with shooting Ronald Reagan in a white T-shirt. When I was, you know, shooting, I was, I was like, that would be so badass. Because he's always why? in three-piece suits. Exactly why. That was an obsession. I mean, I could name a 300 people I'd like to have dinner <laughs> Before with. Before that. I, you know what I mean? Yeah. OK, I'll shoot a couple. Find me. And then find Seth. Uh, you were better before. Who would you say the most important person in your childhood was? Probably my mom. I mean, she's done everything. She's been a Playboy bunny. She used to sell coffins for a living. That's amazing. So, yeah, she just got back from Kurdistan. She ran an orphanage in Kurdistan and ran a school there. So taught me clash songs while we did the dishes when I was a kid. I mean, wow, she's a cool lady. Yeah. Go in that chair. Go downfield. No on it like. Right there. This diner is great. What's the most important thing that you learned this year? The year's early, but what would you say so far? I mean, I guess it's like anything else. If you really like your job and you like to go to work, you're more invested than if you're doing something you don't want to do. So it's really changed my work ethic as a man, as a professional, if you call it a profession. It's a profession. I guess so, yeah. But I think like when I used to know you back in the day in L.A., I didn't know if I wanted to be an actor. I didn't know what I wanted to do. It was like do. a reluctant flow. It was reluctant. Yeah, you weren't really committing to yeah, it. Yeah, and I had, you know, I was getting offers on things, and I may Beautiful. or may not show up. You know, I was that yeah. guy. And then something, I don't know, relax this arm down there, maybe. Just, yeah, just scoot your chair up so you're really close and easy to the counter. It's a beautiful picture. Back then, I just, I didn't know what I wanted to do, so I didn't really put a lot into it. But I think the last couple years being on the show and working with these people and it slowed me down in the best possible ways, you know what I mean? Oh, God, yes. <laughs> Pull away from your hand, oh, uh, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Wow, this is cool, too. When did you like first get here? There. God, I got here 17 years ago. It was cool yeah, for a while. Out. I mean, we were trying to yeah. kind of do like a factory thing, and it, you had a cool place. It was a space where I could I could go grab your camera, grab your lights. You know, there'd be art studios and editing rooms. A couple and of those. What happened to that? The collective hardware movement. Like everything in New York, it became a party place after a while. Beautiful. All right. Whose idea was it to ride bikes in Mine. the snow? Mine. Come with it. Whoa, a little this slippery. Much better. Ah, uh, there we go. Pavement. Go really slow. When I lived here, I remember I used to assist all these mean photographers that threw cameras at me, and everyone yeah. would be like, "You're so great. You're the greatest." And like, do you think that when people hype you like that, that like you start buying it? Do you feel like you become irrelevant? That's what I always feel. Like if no. I believe it. No, I don't think that. I mean, uh, it's like that. We were talking about it last night a little bit, and you said. Uh, you know, there's that famous quote, you know, do you think that a little bit no. of success has, has changed you? And you, it's no, the people around you change. Yeah. And I think that's 
very true yeah, in a lot of ways. I do too. I mean, what about you? You start, you know, I never you, you shoot a lot front. of celebrities. Do you see celebrities changing around you all the time in the day? I always and... find that, like, the bigger, the more relaxed and comfortable, and then, like, the new kid that's going to be on WB is a mess with a, tr a crew of 70 people and 80 handlers. Yeah. And then the Clint Eastwood comes alone, takes his own shirt off, doesn't yeah. need to go to wardrobe to do wardrobe. Yeah. He'll just take his shirt off on set yeah. and be like, yo, do you have the other one? And that's the big difference. I mean, we all want to be Clint Eastwood in the end, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> ah, yeah. Beautiful. Let me ask you a question. Yes. What's the biggest mis misconception about you? That I am uh, some huge, rich photographer that, like, you know, flies on A380s and travels the world when, you know, I'm grinding just like everybody else. Everyone's like, oh, yo, but you got a plane, though, right? You know, like, they have this fantasy about what my career is, like, you know, in that way. <laughs> They're right. like, yo, you're balling. I'm like, no. Not really. Right. <laughs> Yeah, this is great. Yeah, it's interesting because I'm like uh, interviewing, which makes me really uncomfortable, but he's leading me into questions. Is he ready? Yeah, you look amazed. It's my stylist, Chuck. I don't know if you've met. Do it here. Close to the ball. Come here for a second. Right against the wall. <laughs> You're gonna make people tell us. How do you keep inspired when you're doing 700 things? I, you know, I remember when I first came here, they, uh, I did a little bitty art show with some friends, and then it came out, I came out in this book, one of those giant magazines. Give it to me right here, books, yeah. Right? But it, was, it showed like five artists in New York and it was like Julian Schnabel and I, all these great artists. And then I was in that list and I was like, how am I in this list? And then um, I, I, things, things start, I started being given things, like given shows and stuff. And it kind, I kind of felt shitty about it, to be honest. But I think after being here and, and being around artists as I grow older, I, I try harder to do things and I dabble less. Right. I mean, it's, it's different than it was back then. I mean, we didn't have uh, Instagram and selfies and all this other bull I mean, most of the time, people just come up and they go, can I get a selfie? Like, before they even ask you your name or what you do, you know? So, uh... That's the shot. Yeah. That's Whoa. done. <laughs> Aim this at us for a key light. I'm gonna show them some pictures. This is my... Oh, that's cool. I like this. My head cut off. That one. <laughs> that's, that's the one to that's use? That's my favorite one. Yeah. OK. I like all these. You're an assassin. <laughs> In many ways, I'm still trying to identify with how I fit into the world. When I set out to do the show, I have strong ideas, but it's funny. If you stay curious, you never know where you're headed. I know one thing for sure. If I have kids, I'm definitely teaching them Clash songs while washing the dishes.